up a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. Hello, America. I'm Mark Levin. Our number, 877-381-3811, 877-381-3811. You know, one of my favorite senators, actually one of my favorite public officials, has become Tom Cotton. He has the guts to state the truth. That's all he does. He states the truth, whether it's about history, whether it's about China, whether it's about trade. And he comes under vicious attack, you know, for saying things that 10 years ago you would say it wasn't a big deal. Senator, how are you? I'm doing great, Mark. I hope you're doing well. You know, sometimes I feel like when I speak the truth and get attacked by the woke left, all I'm doing is saying what people here in Arkansas think is common sense. And a lot of the country, I'll tell you the truth. Um... You go to the Senate floor, you give a speech about 1620 and the pilgrims, and you say, this is the beginning of the real history of America. You're attacked by the same leftist forces that came up with the 1619 uh, crapola, and you've been attacked for this. What's going on exactly? Yeah, so, Mark, first off, I just want to point out that I think it's very sad that we're coming up Saturday on the 400th anniversary of the pilgrims' landing in 1620 and the 400th anniversary of the Mayflower Compact, the very first constitution in America. You know, 200 years ago, this is a huge celebration. 100 years ago, it was a huge celebration with recently uh, elected Vice President-elect Calvin Coolidge. Yet here we are, and, uh, you know, where are the parades? Where are the commemorations? Where are the celebrations? I I think it's a pretty sad commentary on the sense that so many people uh, have, you know, the, the indoctrination that we've had that this is somehow a bad thing. Uh, It's a good thing. It's a great thing. The pilgrims left the old world seeking religious freedom. They came here. They braved the North Atlantic. They braved the harsh winter. They made peace with the local Indian tribe, the Wampanoags. That peace lasted for 50 years. They bequeathed to us the principles of the Mayflower Compact, so much so that so much of what we can see in our own declaration constitution, the equality of all mankind uh, from one uh, or from many one. Uh, equality before the law and the equal and impartial administration of the law. And I wanted to celebrate that legacy and point out that we should be proud of it. Uh, We shouldn't subscribe to the revisionist charlatans who wrote the 1619 Project. And and just yesterday, Mark, the New York Times in the food section of all places called the Thanksgiving and Pilgrim story a myth and a caricature, uh, which I think is very, very sad and rejected by the vast majority of Americans who are proud of our heritage. You know, Senator, you fought for this country. You have committed your life to public service. You watch this. Forget about being in the Senate. You watch this as a, as a, as a human being, as, as an American citizen. You know how you were brought up, what your beliefs were. I watch it, too. This is, this is like these neo-Marxists come in. They want to destroy any belief system we have in the greatness of this country. They want to rewrite American history. And this is ubiquitous now, isn't it? Mark, it certainly would seem ubiquitous if you uh, follow social media or you watch the mainstream media or Hollywood or Silicon Valley. But I got to tell you, we just had an election in which the woke left was repudiated. Americans are proud of our country. They don't want radical Marxists in charge controlling what our children can learn or what we can say about our history. We should be proud of what happened 400 years ago this Saturday. And our, our children should learn it, and they should be proud of it as well. And, you know, I don't really care how many radical Democratic uh, politicians attack me or how many trolls on social media with their blue check marks from New York and Hollywood and Silicon Valley don't like it. They are a small and tiny, if vocal, minority. And I will be the voice for that large majority out there who is proud of America and wants to defend America. I think you make a good point. The only problem is in the culture... It's not a matter of the vote. And when you look at our universities and colleges, when you look at now how what's seeping into our government schools, when you look at entertainment and so forth and so on, it's very it's very dark, very bleak. All the heroes are fighting against the United States and systemic racism and on and on and on. We have to figure out how to get back into the culture and do and, and, and duke it out, don't we? Yeah, Mark, it's really important. You know, it reminds me of a political cartoon I saw the other day with two moms sitting on a bench while their kids played uh, in the playground behind them. And one of the moms said, you know, I'm really worried about sending Johnny back to school. And the other mom said, because of the virus? And the first mom said, no, because of the indoctrination. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we, have to, 
we have to realize that too often in our schools, but especially our universities, our children are being indoctrinated. That story yesterday in the New York Times mm. talked about some professor who taught the real story of Thanksgiving and sent her kids home for Thanksgiving break in the past. She said, yeah, we have a saying for it. It's the Thanksgiving massacre. We teach these uh, young students what really happened in Thanksgiving, what the real story of the pilgrims are. And they go home, they tell their parents and their grandparents about that. And let's just say it goes over with a thud. Well, it should go over with, with a thud. We should be teaching our children to be proud of our heritage. We should teach them to celebrate what happened in 1620, just like the pilgrims and the Wampanoag tribe celebrated a year later in 1621 for the first Thanksgiving couple other questions, Senator. These these Georgia Senate races, uh, which are so damn crucial, uh, how do you think that's going, or do you know? Well, uh, Mark, I was just in Georgia campaigning today with David Perdue and Kelly Leffler just outside Robbins Air Force Base. I thought it was perfectly a appropriate place because you got Raphael Warnock, who says you can't worship God and serve in the military. you got John Ossoff, who wants to cut the budgets of the military radically. Um, and I don't think that people of Georgia go for that. You know, it's a rare thing to know that your vote might determine control of the United States Senate. Uh, most of the times you go into an election, you don't know how the rest of the country is going to vote. But the people of Georgia have seemed to have it reserved to them to determine the fate of this nation over the next two years. I got to tell you, there's huge crowds and great energy. Obviously, the Democrats are working overtime uh, to try to win this election on January 5th. But uh, we got so many people working hard, and I just encourage all your listeners to go online to georgiabattleground.com and find out how they can help out as well. Senator, I happen to be one of those who's very concerned about what happened in this presidential election. We have this guy, Mark Elias, who was behind the dossier, who used to be a uh, Harry Reid kind of legal hitman who who turned that Senate seat from, uh, from Coleman to Franklin. Um, and who was leading this effort in many states, particularly the battleground states, with surrogate groups, with the Democrat Party, with the Biden campaign to change the rules, and they succeeded in many states. They either targeted uh, the legislatures that were Democrat, or they targeted the governor and targeted these courts like they have in Pennsylvania, and there were significant changes made, really, right up this, to uh, two months before the election, when you look at Nevada and so forth. And I'm watching this stuff, and uh, so there are constitutional issues under the Equal Protection Clause, under Article 2, who gets to make these laws. You see, Rudy today, and, and many people, including my wife, are working on these cases. They have hundreds and hundreds of affidavits, and all we hear is, well, it's not enough to deliver victory. Shouldn't we find out what the hell took place in these different states where numbers are starting to show up, like in Georgia, or in the case of Pennsylvania, where the politics of that road court, just, just as the Florida road court in 2000, are so obvious. Don't we need to fix this going forward? Yeah, so, Mark, first off, we absolutely should get to the bottom of what happened uh, in Georgia, in Nevada, in Arizona, in Pennsylvania, and other states. The president has a right to have a fair and open counting of every legal ballot and make sure that no illegal ballots are counting. Uh, we'll see what the resolution of that. That's really out of the hands of, of politicians at this point. This is in the hands of lawyers and the president's lawyers in particular. Uh, but going forward, Yes, we need to make sure that our elections have integrity, that you don't have the kind of last-minute changes, that you don't have systems that are susceptible to fraud, like universal mail-out balloting with ballot harvesting, which is essentially the end of the sanctity of the, of the secret yes. ballot. If, you, if everyone knows that you've got a ballot in your home, someone can just show up at your house and say, hey, I want to collect your ballot. You have no idea who they are. That can be a very intimidating, very tense kind of moment. People should be able to cast their ballots in the sanctity of the voting booth, that that's what they choose. That's mm -hmm. why it's so important that we win those elections in Georgia, because we cannot have Nancy Pelosi's crazy voting law voiced upon this country that would mandate, mandate nationwide mail out ballot balloting and allow ballot harvesting without so much as signature verification, not, uh, not to say even photo identification. Now, you bring up signature verification. This is one of the problems, big problem in Pennsylvania, but in Georgia, when you have the Secretary of State who, behind the scenes with this Mark Elias, basically, signs a, an agreement that weakens the necessity for signatures, and the state legislature had nothing to do with it. They had, they had no knowledge of this. And, and I'm thinking to myself, well, if that's not a violation of Article 2, there is no violation of Article 2. A Secretary of State can't sign 
an agreement that rearranges a key factor in the election laws like that. That's one of the things Lynn Wood is challenging, by the way. Yeah, Mark. Well, as you know, consent decrees have been abused by the left for many, many years. So-called sue and settle cases, where you get exactly. favorable officials or officials that just don't want bad, don't want bad publicity, and they purport to make public policy by entering into a consent decree settlement with the left. Uh, it's happened in this context. It's happened in so many other contexts, environmental law, and so forth. Uh, that is an area that is right for the Supreme Court to review to make sure that, in fact, it's the people's elected representatives through the political processes making these laws, not left-wing activists who are suing in court. All right, Senator, we appreciate all you're doing, and uh, I think uh, I think the entire audience here, except for a few out there who are kind of listening in, uh, agree with you and appreciate what you're doing. So take care of yourself. Hey, well, thank you very much, Mark. And to all of your listeners, let me wish you a happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> and let me say, God bless the memory of the pilgrims of 1620, our pilgrim fathers. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Take care, sir.